Hi everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I am back with another energetic channeled celebrity video. Now this is my first video of 2023 and I have had some kind of time trying to get this video to you. First off, nothing would record. The electricity would go out, the lights would blow, the camera wouldn't record. Then my microphone went completely dead, okay? So I went and replaced the microphone. Then I tested the new microphone, then I recorded the video three times, and all three times after testing, no voice could be heard. It was like erased. It was just me going like this on the camera and talking, and I was like, what is going on? So clearly, the paranormal activity around this story is exactly how it was around this young actor's life. Completely odd and multifaceted, coming from very different directions. Now, I'm talking about a young actor who comes from a Hollywood family. He is the son of a very famous actor slash martial artist who died at the peak of his career what I call a natural athlete, somebody who connected body, mind, and soul way before it was popular, extreme martial artist, lived, walked, and talked, and breathed the life that he did and showed on film. He was only 33 when he suddenly died from some sort of brain fluid swelling, we'll call it an aneurysm, and that was it. This person was left fatherless at the age of eight and subsequently would end up passing away himself at the age of 28 after he took a movie role in a movie that has some of the most metaphysical ritualistic occult connotations that I've ever heard and in the midst of filming this movie with a prop gun the reason it's called a prop gun is because it is a prop it isn't real it's make-believe movies are make-believe so this prop gun was loaded with partial ammunition that shot the actor in the stomach while filming, while on camera, also ritualistic. And this young actor died after being shot in the stomach. Now, the solar plexus is more like it, and there's a reason for that. But how did we get here? Like, how did this happen to this young man? And I'm talking about the young actor, Brandon Lee, son of Bruce Lee. Now, as I said, Bruce passed away at the age of 33, the height of his career. Like, he could have gone on another 40 years. Brandon Lee was left fatherless at the age of eight. And I'm sure it left a huge hole in his heart and his sister's and his mother's heart that their father and the leader of their family, their support, was gone. So Brandon Lee would have come through this childhood with very conflicted notions. Even if he wanted to do something different, he would still want to honor his father because his father wasn't there. He will want to shine in the eyes of his father, the friends and the fans, in order to connect with his father. So Brandon was born on February 1st of 1965, and that is like really hard to believe because he's forever imprinted at the age of 28. So he literally would have just turned 57 a few weeks ago. I tried to do this video for his birthday, but as I said, the energy had other things in mind. So Brandon was born February 1st of 1965, Aquarius Sun. He's an Aquarius sun and moon. Now, one thing y'all know about Aquarius is they are rebellious to the point of being stupidly disagreeable if they think that you're trying to control them. So a lot of Aquarius or Uranian energy, if it's highly placed in your chart, is going to randomly just cause problems for the sake of problems so that you can't control them. They're like, you're not going to control me. I won't be confined by this. And then you find yourself with some kind of control issue going on with the person you just wanted them to do whatever it was you wanted them to do but Brandon was a double Aquarius with a Capricorn rising now the Capricorn rising adds some responsibility and nuances of basic good thinking so conscientious thinking and responsibility based biased 
it adds that to that double Aquarius or we probably see a different kind of a kid come out from that upbringing. The Capricorn rising instills in it, this is anybody, Capricorn rising, it's going to bring about an ultra sense of responsibility very early on in life, which is very apropos because this child lost his father at age eight, making him deal with concepts of life and death at age eight when other kids are playing you know, kickball or whatever they're doing. Now, Brandon had Venus conjunct Mercury in the first house in Capricorn. So when Venus is on your ascendant, people find you very attractive. They like your mannerisms. They like your nature. They like everything about you. And since it's in Capricorn, it softens the Capricorn rising for him and gives him a more kind way of approaching things because Capricorn can be quite direct and people don't like directness on this planet, as you've noticed. So this would have softened that directness. And then conjunct Mercury would have given him a quick wit, um, a mind for reading and knowledge and wanting to evolve himself on an emotional level, on an intellectual level, on a metaphysical level. And then we have the sun conjunct the moon also in the first house because he had a mid-degree rising sign. So when I was looking at that, I'm like, that's a nice balance, actually. So this kid was a well-balanced kind of kid. He was not off the rails, crazy, you know, or doing stuff like that. He was a well-balanced, good kid. Then you look at Saturn. He had a bunch of T-squares and he had some Earth trines as well, Grand trines. So he was both working through past life energy and given gifts from past life energy. Check and balance, if you will. So he had Saturn, generational, in Pisces, in the second house. Now the second house in the natal chart of astrology is ruled by Taurus, but conceptually it's our belief system. So are we born into what kind of house? What kind of religion? What kind of experience? How do our relatives believe around us? The core essence of what we believe. Do we believe like this or do we believe like that? So the second house is exactly that. And with the Saturn in Pisces, there is karmic ties to the way that he chose his belief system and karmic ties to the way that he supported himself within that belief system. So the way that he earned on this planet. When you look at that Saturn, it is in opposition to Pluto and Uranus, also generational from the mid 60s in Pluto and Virgo in the eighth house, which expands his awareness out into all matters of other people's money. So this would be employment matters, obviously. Other people's belief systems, like culturally, what does he believe? Because he lived between two worlds. And then we see out of orb, but in sign, Mars in Virgo in the eighth, which describes his father. Because all three of those planets placed in the eighth house are going to be the energy of his father also with the sun in the first house. So this kid had to harness energy that belonged to the generation, the paternal, the father generation before him. So he inherited that into this lifetime. So when I looked at the chart and the way... The way that I do it is I will read the chart really quickly and then I will kind of meditate on it as in I'll look at it and see what my mind gets with it and I'm drawn to certain things in the chart which make me understand what I'm trying to talk about within the context of these videos. So it's kind of a combination of things. But this kid had a already foreboding binding attached to him at the time that he was born. So that is an interesting concept. I got a lot of energy around him, very intelligent, so enjoyed conversing. Probably too worldly or intellectual for his age at the time. Also noted he was trying to free himself from what other people expected of him and what he felt was expected of him at the time of his death. What I found even more fascinating when I went back into the father's energy, Bruce Lee, at the time that he died, he'd made a similar demand of the universe to shift the path of his life and take him in a new direction. 
Now you and I are thinking to ourselves, why would anybody do that when they're totally famous, they got all the money they want, they've got all the cars, they've got all the food, they, they can travel all over the world, etc., etc. People love them and adore them. And it's a pretty cushy type of thing. But you see, Bruce Lee, along with Brandon Lee, was tied in tandem from a past life. I'm gonna use the word energetic binding. And what that is, what that means is it means in a particular lifetime, and I got the last four lifetimes on a cycle, that these two beings, human, okay, human, but on the spirit level, these two people, who weren't people yet, <laughs> but these two people were tied energetically to some other direction than their direction, okay? So there was another direction leading them in this life. Now, if you're a soul, let's say on the other side, and you're deciding to come through and you want to change a pattern. So you say to whoever makes these rules, because I really don't know, but you say, you know, I'm, I want to come through. I want to make amends for this. I would like to elevate my soul and do something different because I've already done this four times. I would like to do something different and achieve and see the world in a different light. Like I would like to take a different path, a path that I'm not familiar with, a path that's not second nature to me. So you make this arrangement. Now, what if you come into this dimension and the energy that resides here says, oh, 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 no, 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 no. We need your energy because you are like a vibrant energy and together we are able to do what we need to do by utilizing your energy to power our mindset. That's how, oh, did you see that? There, I got it. You saw that this was happening the other night. It was incessantly happening. So what if you're born and you're like, okay, in this life, you're a little baby because we don't remember our past lives, most of us. And you're a little kid and you're like, I'm going to do this. This is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to love it. And I'm going to go in a different direction. And it's going to work for me. And it's going to be extraordinary. And you get here and you have no memory. And so you want to follow in the footsteps of your family. But that family member who was just about to shift his own path, he just, I'm talking about Bruce Lee, literally the several weeks before he died, he was about to shift himself into another direction. And that direction was going to lead his soul down a path that would teach him and free him from the past four lifetimes in binding. What if you felt responsible for something that you had no responsibility to? So basically you're gaslit on the other side and you come back in saying you're going to do something in order to make amends for something, but none of these things have to do with you really, but somehow you believe they do because it's been hidden from you. This is what happened to Bruce Lee. This is why Bruce Lee left the planet so young. He was in the process of changing how he wanted to be seen. He was breaking the shackles. He doesn't look like he's shackled. He had this great life, these great kids, this great marriage, but he was shackled because he was doing exactly to a T what was expected of him and nothing more and nothing less. They needed him to remain at that level for them. So he passes away and then his son, takes over that position. Now, why is his son so gung-ho to be an actor? Why? Why does he want to be an actor so bad? Deep down, he's trying to connect with his father. And once he gets there, he's curious about that life. Although I'm sure he knows more than us about it because he grew up around it. But he's curious about it. So he starts to involve himself in the life like his father. But yet at the same time, his rebellious nature is like, no, I'm my own person. On a soul level, he's like, I'm my own person. And had he lived, he would have really been diametrically so different than he was when he died because he was in the middle of going through the same thing. The week and months before he died, he was in the process of changing the direction of his life. He wanted to be in the movie, The Crow. Now let's talk about that movie, The Crow. All right, premise, plot. I never saw the movie, but the plot of the movie is very metaphysical, very ritualistic, and it's a cult. It's magic. So the crow, let's talk about crows. Crows in the spiritual realm by any denomination of belief system are messengers. 
Crows bring messengers. They gather information and they drop information. So they find out information and they bring information. Crows are the one animal in crow magic that walks between the veil. What does that mean? We are on earth, hopefully. We're here, you're talking to me, I'm talking to you. This is this dimension, one of the lower vibration, vibrational dimensions. When people pass away, they raise to a higher dimensional experience and it can raise all the way up till there's complete enlightenment allegedly I, I don't think anybody here is reaching that but anyway so we continue to elevate into different dimensions and we live in fully parallel lives and in different experiences from this one but what happens in between when somebody won't go to another dimension and somebody won't live in either here or there. We call that the astral level. It is the realm of energy right outside of the blanket that veils us in this dimension. So the astral level is where crows get to go to get a lot of information. They can hear things, feel things, and they can manifest right here as a crow. They can cross through the energetic clouding, if you will, or veil, they can shape shift onto the other side to gather information, kind of like hidden behind the astral level veil, and they can manifest out on the other side as any kind of person or energy that is needed to deliver the message. Now, when crow shows up in your life and you see a crow, Sometimes a crow is positioned in your life in order for you to basically morally redirect your life. So I find it so funny or ironic actually that Brandon Lee was like, I have to do the movie The Crow. Why? Why was he drawn to that movie? He was drawn to a movie that's plot had to do with a musician who was murdered after his girlfriend was raped and murdered and a crow shapeshifted energetically in order to bring said musician back into this dimension so that he could avenge the death of himself and his girlfriend. Crow magic. So when you look at it like that, who was in this dimension and what were they supposed to be doing to avenge what death of their father? Do you see what I'm saying? So when we're looking at it, he was drawn. The energy I got is I have to do that movie. That's my movie. Here's another concept that I felt very strongly with this young man. When he was driven to do this movie, which just seems like a casual job, like I want to be in a movie. This is going to distinguish me. I like the plot. I like the writing. I like everything about it. It seems like I could do this. But is this really coming from himself? Is this his own intentions or is this being projected on him because the crow energy is also one that can project an outcome onto you at the same time that you're trying to follow a different path so that you will redirect yourself to position yourself so that past life intention comes into play even though it's not your responsibility in this life what I'm trying to say is Brandon Lee was mixed up kind of like in an energetic entwinement with a bunch of energies going in multi-directions with more than one person behind the scenes pulling all of these strings. But he walks up to audition for this and of course he feels great, he got the role. Everybody else was pushed to the side. I see it, I see like a parting of, you know, a parting of the ways down the road so that Brandon Lee can step in and he is this role in The Crow. But was that what he wanted? Of course, he wanted to do the work. He wanted to make the money. We know this. But deep down, was this satisfying to him? And the answer is no. He was planning on going in a different direction. I got this instinctually with his life. Was not going to want to step in to the many other movie deals that were behind the scenes. He did not want to do it. I don't care if he signed the contract. I don't care if he went to dinner with every producer in town and said, I'm happy to do it. This was not the case internally. So there was a conflict going on there between what this young man wanted for himself, 
what he felt obligated to and what he was being pushed by projection to focus on, which wasn't his real intention. This is what I'm getting. This wasn't his intention. So there was a lot of elements to this particular circumstance that were pushing him in all kinds of directions that were not necessarily the directions that he himself on a soul level wanted to go into. So he was born into a family where there were bindings on the energy of that family. That's why his father and mother got together. Both sides of the family are metaphysically bound and the kids came through that. So there was like a kind of like chains on the energy. And until they were older, I guess, they wouldn't have been able to free themselves. And with the father, like the son, both tried to free themselves prior to their passing. Now, obviously the father died, quote, of normal causes. And the son died because some person on a movie set of make-believe with a prop gun decided to load it with some kind of real ammunition that killed this kid. Now, let's look at that. So I'm assuming these people in the studio, of which I know many, know how to handle a prop gun, right? They know how to put blanks in it because it's not rocket science. At a certain point, you don't allow real ammunition in a gun. So this young actor walks onto the set where some kind of prop is there for him to play make-believe and the gun has some kind of part of ammunition in it that is powerful enough to take this kid off the planet and that is what happens. At the same time, he has chosen a movie about a character that comes back to avenge itself and almost in tandem is taken out while trying to avenge himself in this life in order to move down a different path. The character in the movie, The Crow, is doing his swan song, his finale, the end of his sort of karmic strand of thought while he comes back to avenge that which is wrong. Meanwhile, the actor playing the character doing the swan song is actually murdered because that's what it is you can call it an accident all you want but he's taken off the planet and i wanted to address that because so many times we think and you just saw that there you go it happened again so many times we think that certain things are accidents this is an accident what we don't understand is that when people behind our backs and there are many especially in brandon's case because he was the son of a famous actor who was bound energetically through the for past lifetimes. But people do all kinds of things behind the scenes in order to get their way. Why they want to get their way is, is up for conjecture, but to get their own way. So when I was focusing on the energy around this movie, what I noticed is there was a tremendous amount of reflective light around the set. Not literally, not like I could walk in to, you know, the studio where they were filming or you know the warehouse where they were filming and see the reflection but i'm talking on the astral level there was a tremendous amount of reflection around this movie set in the way of mirrors mirrors gridded all around this movie set and this actor and so i was trying to pick up the reasoning behind that because i could see mirrors in the astral mirrors are reflective we you see that Mirrors are reflective. Even this camera has a reflective mirror. So I was trying to pick up on why the mirrors were put there outside of physical proximity and who had orchestrated that. There's a concept that we have to understand as human beings that we don't understand a lot of the time. And that is there is magic occult ritual going on behind our backs all the time by people in positions of power leave it all over the world, use your imagination, positions of power that will use energy frequencies to control us, especially when we think we're just doing what we do day-to-day -day stuff without any thought of what goes on behind the scenes. Am I going to a particular place because it's my choice or have I been moved here because somebody else has an idea for me, which is the case with this actor? this young man and what are the mirrors that were all around the set around the warehouse what was i seeing i got glimpses of very tall 
long, thin, thin mirrors that looked almost like a stone wall at different levels of height and almost encrusted with jewel-toned kind of gold diamonds around them and mirrors where you could see but was reflective of hallways, of hallways, of hallways, of hallways of mirrors around him and the set on the astral level. Now, what if, and it's actually, it is an if, not a what if, it happened. So somebody behind the scenes has an ulterior motive for this movie and this actor. They want it to hit big. So they pray in a different way. We'll just call it ritualistically. And they use and conjure up entities. Meanwhile, while doing a movie about somebody conjuring up the energy of a dead person to come back and avenge their death. So it's running in tandem. In order to get that movie made, this was the offering for that movie to be made. Sounds ridiculous, but that's exactly what I got. So the energy reverberation outside of this frequency caused like an electrical shock in a way. And when that happens, you can prepare an environment. So for example, you can set a dinner table. You yourself can set it. You can put everything around the dinner table that's going to be needed in the fashion it's needed. You can know specifically. You can photograph it to be sure you put knives and forks and cups and spoons and plates in the right direction with table settings. And when an energy frequency is corrupted from the astral level, which in this case it was, it blows that out of the park. So you come back and you're like, wait, where did all the cups go? So suddenly what was obvious is now frequency wise, not presenting itself in front of you, or it's presenting a different story, which was the case with why this gun went off. What I'm saying to you is somebody could have gone in there and did go in there and set this gun up. And they set this gun up to present itself as a, prop gun. But on the astral level, there was other energy at work which corrupted this frequency and caused another set of circumstances to combine with this, which actually took Brandon Lee out of his lifetime. So the energy around this whole movie is in triplicity. It's going in three different directions with three different intentions. But I can tell you this, Brandon Lee was going to change the direction of his life. He was going to move it in a different direction. He was going to take a step to free his soul and move himself forward. Move himself forward. The energy right now is very calm and very peaceful around it. And I don't even think he likes people talking about it. He doesn't like to remember it because he was basically shackled. Shows me the shackles on the arms. He was confined. He was about to break free. Yes, he had to make money. Yes, it's an easy way to make money when you're born into a family. But like his father, they were these beautiful, wild animals trying to free themselves from the zookeeper. I don't know who the zookeeper is, but that is the wording I've been told to use. They wanted to free themselves from the zookeeper who kept them trapped. This is energetically. This is on an energetic level. And when Brandon Lee stepped into the film as the crow, he stepped in to take over the energy of that character that was written to come to life. So whoever the author is of this novel, movie, book, how a screenplay, however it came about, this was actually conjured up. The reason the story is being told is because on the astral level, it needed to be heard. So it was conjured up here. So it lives here and there. There's two different outcomes for that when you live here and there. So that's actually what happened in this movie. And you see the camera going again. That's actually what happened in this movie. This is my first video, again, of 2023, and the first little snippet into what happened during the movie The Crow with Brandon Lee. And once again, my name is Sloan from SloanBella.com.